Among the greatest symbols of the United States' power are its fleet of 11 nuclear-powered aircraft carriers. With new aircraft like the F-35C Lightning entering operational service, and even more futuristic programs on the horizon, the composition of the carrier air wing will be getting a shakeup. In this video, we're going to look at the announced changes to the future U.S. Navy carrier air wing's aircraft composition, the status quo it's replacing, and some other projections looking even further into the future. I'm your host Brendan, and this is Battle Order. First, I'd like to thank our Patreon supporters who allow us to cover more interesting but less popular topics. If you want to help Battle Order grow and get a bunch of perks, including early access to videos, consider supporting us at patreon.com slash battleorder. But on to the topic at hand. Before we get into the future of the carrier air wing, first, let's look at the present. For context, U.S. Navy aircraft carriers are nuclear-powered catobar carriers, meaning catapult-assisted takeoff but arrested recovery. This means steam or electromagnetically driven catapults aid in getting aircraft up to speed for takeoff, while arrestor wires are used to recover aircraft on landing. This is different from short takeoff but arrested recovery carriers like the Russian Kuznetsov class, which often have a ski jump to aid in takeoff rather than a catapult. Like Catobar carriers, Stobar carriers can launch and recover navalized conventional aircraft, but are comparatively limited in aircraft payload. This is again different from short takeoff vertical landing carriers like the British Queen Elizabeth class, which lack both catapults and arrestor wires and thus require aircraft that are capable of landing vertically while also being able to conduct short or vertical takeoffs. But onto the aircraft themselves. The U.S. Navy Carrier Air Wing currently consists of four strike fighter squadrons, one electronic attack squadron, one airborne early warning squadron, one helicopter sea combat squadron, one helicopter maritime strike squadron, and one fleet support logistics detachment. The strike fighter squadrons total 44 strike fighters, with 10 to 14 aircraft per squadron. These are multi-role fighter and attack squadrons tasked with a variety of roles including air superiority, ground strike, maritime strike, suppression of enemy air defenses or SEED, reconnaissance, forward air control, and aerial refueling. The platforms in the strike fighter squadrons now fill roles that would have been filled by four different airframes three or four decades ago. Strike fighters are now almost entirely FA-18E or F Super Hornets, which entered service in 1999 as the replacement for the F-14 Tomcat. The FA-18 Echo is the Super Hornet's single seat variant manned by one pilot, while the Foxtrot has a second seat for a weapon system officer or WIZO, who can take some workload off of the pilot for certain mission sets. Tasks a Wizzo may handle include air-to-ground target finding, navigation, acting as a forward air controller for other air assets, or other duties related to mission execution. However, Wizzos are not pilots and do not directly fire the aircraft's ordnance or guns. As of the early and mid-2010s, the group could also include one or two squadrons of older FA-18C Hornets, but these were taken out of combat service by the Navy in 2000. 2018. The Marine Corps continued to operate the FA-18C for shipboard deployments as part of their TAC Air Integration Program. However, the last Marine Hornet carrier deployment began in 2020, carried out by Marine Strike Fighter Squadron 323 assigned to Carrier Wing 17 aboard the USS Nimitz. Both services are replacing the Legacy Hornet with the F-35 Lightning, which we'll be getting to in a little bit. Moving on, the Electronic Attack Squadron consists of five EA-18G Growler electronic warfare aircraft based on the two-seater version of the Super Hornet. This element is responsible for providing jamming support for strike fighters as well as suppressing enemy air defenses. The AEW squadron, meanwhile, consists of four E-2C or newer E-2D Hawkeye Airborne Early Warning aircraft. This squadron provides the entire carrier strike group, including both air and naval assets, with early warning and target identification against enemy air threats. They also play a role in integrating the entire battle group's air defense capability, including the capabilities of the escort destroyers and cruisers. The Hawkeye can also act as a command and control node for strike missions, or a communications relay to extend the range of mission communications. Having four on board means American aircraft carriers have the ability to keep one in the air at all times. 
Although sighted is not organic to the carrier air wing itself, each carrier also has two C2A Greyhounds for carrier onboard delivery. Essentially supply aircraft that connect the carrier to shore establishments while at sea, they aid in the transfer supplies, mail, and personnel. Each seagoing detachment of two aircraft are part of one of two fleet logistics squadrons. And then for rotary wing aviation, both of the carrier's helicopter squadrons are equipped with variants of the MH-60 Seahawk. The helicopter Sea Combat Squadron is equipped with eight MH-60S helicopters, which fill a variety of functions, including general utility, transferring personnel and materiel between ships, search and rescue, and close air support. The helicopter Maritime Strike Squadron, meanwhile, runs 11 MH-60Rs, focused on the anti-surface and anti-submarine warfare Mission. They're used for maritime reconnaissance using their radars to locate ships and periscopes, and employ sonar buoys to track down enemy submarines. They may also be armed with Mark 54 air launch torpedoes or Hellfire missiles to prosecute targets. Typically, about eight of the carrier's helicopters are shifted to the carrier's escorts to free up deck and hangar space on the carrier itself. So in total, the carrier air wing has 74 aircraft, give or take. Although the carrier itself is capable of carrying close to 90 aircraft, the actual complement has decreased since the end of the Cold War due to budgetary restrictions and multiple roles being folded into fewer aircraft to save space. Space, after all, is very limited on aircraft carriers, and even if they can technically carry more aircraft, space used for one thing is space that could be used for something else, so there's always a trade-off at play. But how will this change by the end of the 2020s? The US Navy's plan for its air wings post F-35 procurement has changed several times in the past decade. So take this with a grain of salt. As of time of recording, this is the most up-to-date published information. The overall structure of the carrier wing will remain largely similar, but with the addition of an unmanned airborne refueling squadron. First, the balance of strike fighter squadrons will be changing from four Super Hornet squadrons to one squadron with 16 Block 4 F-35C Lightning multi-role fighters and three squadrons with a total of 28 Block 3 Super Hornets between them. The F-35 will essentially be filling the niche once held by the F-A-18C Hornet in both the Navy and Marine Corps. However, in 2021, the U.S. Carl Vinson will be deployed with one F-35C squadron containing 10 aircraft one FA-18F two-seater Super Hornet squadron with 14 aircraft, and two FA-18E one-seater Super Hornet squadrons with 10 aircraft each. So that's 10 F-35s to 34 Super Hornets for the first F-35 carrier deployment. The Marine Corps will be getting the second with the 10 aircraft Marine Fighter Attack Squadron 314 set for shipboard deployment in 2022. Second, the two C-2 Greyhounds will be replaced in the carrier delivery role by three C CMV-22B Ospreys. A modified version of the Osprey already in service with the U.S. Marines, the new tilt rotor delivery aircraft is expected to be in full operational service by 2023. Third, the Navy hopes to implement a squadron of five to nine MQ-25 Stingray unmanned aerial refueling aircraft to extend the reach of its relatively limited range force. The US Navy hasn't had a dedicated refueling aircraft since it retired the KA-6D intruder in the 1990s, which some have criticized as significantly impacting the range of the air wing. The S-3B Viking anti-submarine warfare aircraft was initially pressed into this role using buddy stores, but with the Viking now out of service, Super Hornets now fulfill the tanker role. To do this, they carry five external fuel tanks carrying a total of 29,000 pounds of fuel. Tanker sorties tie up a significant number of Super Hornets. The U.S. Naval Institute reports that 20 to 30 percent of Super Hornet sorties are tanking missions. Not only does that consistently keep a portion of the Super Hornet fleet from conducting strike missions, but tanking wears down the airframe significantly faster than normal missions with lighter loads. The Navy projects that in a pure conflict, it will be fighting at ranges that it is currently not capable of. Thus, its short-term solution is the purported MQ-25 Stingray. 
A stealthy unmanned aerial vehicle, the Stingray is essentially the leftovers of the more ambitious unmanned carrier launched airborne surveillance and strike program, which was reduced in scope to allow for more lightning and super hornet procurement. While its future is uncertain, the Stingray could very well be the first unmanned aircraft to see operational service on American aircraft carriers. However, small numbers of Stingrays would still likely be limited in the number of aircraft they alone would be able to refuel. Thus, some have argued they would still be a band-aid solution to the issue of range. A more long-term solution may be found in the Super Hornet's replacement, intended to be introduced in the early to mid-2030s towards the end of the Super Hornet's service life. Other minor changes include the increase of the Hawkeye Airborne Early Warning Complement from four aircraft to five aircraft, reportedly due to their importance in the battle network. We speculate it may be because of the shift in focus towards peer operations at longer ranges, as well as the need for an aircraft to control or act as relays for new unmanned aircraft. The introduction of the F-35, which has been vaunted for its implications on data networking, will also likely lead to a changing relationship between the Navy's airborne early warning capabilities and the strike fighters. The Growler electronic attack squadrons could also see a variable increase with a range of 5 to 7 aircraft per squadron rather than just 5. Last year's report also states the Navy's plan on reducing the carrier's helicopter complement from 19 Seahawks to 6 to 10. It's unclear if this includes helicopters that are normally shifted to the escorts, and it contradicts early Navy plans. If this is simply the number of aircraft kept on the carrier itself, that could mean the air wing would still have 14 to 18 helicopters. It's also possible that some of the slack could be transferred to the new Osprey delivery aircraft. As a tilt rotor aircraft, they're capable of sea-based search and rescue. But also just last week, the Navy issued a request for information on a potential Seahawk and MQ-8 Fire Scout replacement to enter service sometime in the 2030s. That's around the same time the US Army plans to replace its UH-60 Blackhawks. The move to reduce helos in the wing could also very well be to keep the air wing under 80 aircraft after throwing more delivery, early warning, electronic warfare and refueling aircraft into the mix. But in our research, we haven't seen a specific justification for the halving of the carrier's helicopter force. Now that you've learned a little bit about the future of the US Navy's carrier-borne aviation, you should check out this video on China's marine capability, where we dive deep on one of the US's most likely adversaries in the future. I'll see you over there.